Welcome to the Simple Software Training University video number 102, Job Configuration Basics. In this video we will go over the process of setting up a simple index scanning and indexing job for manual indexing using the Simple Index New Job Configuration Wizard. The first step of the process is to open the Simple Index software from the Simple Index icon. Next we want to start a new job by clicking the New Job button. When we click the new job button, we'll notice the simple index configuration wizard comes up. The first step of the simple index configuration wizard is to set up the source that you'd like to input the images or pages from. You can choose between scanner, images, PDF files, office documents, all other files, or you can even scan directly to a folder. In this example, we'll be pulling from the SIM 102 input folder. These specific files are TIFF, so we'll be pulling in them as images. The next step of the process is to actually set the folder that we would like to pull the images from for import. So I'll set this to the SIM102 input folder and hit save. It'll automatically fill in the path to that location. And for training purposes, we want to turn on Keep Input Files. This allows us to process the same images over and over again, but tweak the indexing and the job configuration settings to make sure that we have it exactly as we need it. You can also process subfolders of the input folder if you have them. And you also can split multi-page input files. In this particular example, all the pages are single-page input. So it doesn't matter if split multi-page files is turned on or not. We'll skip over the PDF conversion. We're not going to use any of the image cleanup or image processing or OCR capabilities. But these allow you to, one, do certain image cleanup capabilities, like straighten or clean up the page, rotate automatically, delete blank pages. I generally only turn this on if the particular scanner that's being used or the images that are coming in haven't already been edited in this way. The scanner controls generally are superior as well as faster to the simple index image processing capabilities. You can also turn on full page OCR in this if you prefer. The indexing and file naming section is where you set up the index fields that you'd like to name your images with. In this example, we're going to set up three index fields. Based on our sample, we're going to use account number, order number, and business name. We're going to put them in the following order. You can put these fields in any order that you'd like. The name just gives you the name for simple index for what it should call the index field while the indexer is processing. Now for each of the index fields, you'll notice we have a type dropdown. The type dropdown is how you'd like to enter the information for this particular field, whether you want to pull it automatically or type it manually. In this example, we're going to be typing manually, and we're going to want to type whatever we'd like. And for that specific option, we want to pick text. So we'll pick text for all three fields. In the Save Files to example, you'll notice that the index fields aren't being used as the folder and file names. By default, it uses the date and time that the batch was scanned as the file name for the output. If we check Folder, for the index fields, we notice that it applies nested subfolders for each of the folder index fields. So the first index field that has folder checked is the first level subfolder. The second index field with folder checked is the second index or the second subfolder, and the third index field is the third subfolder. The same goes for the file name. With the file name checked, we see that the first index field is the first part second index is the second part, and the third index is the third part. And they're separated with the field separator. In this specific example, we want the business name to be the folder, and the account number and order number to be a part of the, fold, or the file name. 
you can see an example down here. Business name will be the folder, account number, and order number will be the file name. If you want to avoid having to key in the same index fields on multiple images that have the same indexes, you can use the forward checkbox. This will carry forward the index fields to the subsequent pages until that value is changed. In this specific example, each image will have its own index field, so we won't check folder as not to confuse the operator. The required checkbox means that this index field must be filled in before the batch will be released. Since we want the business name, account number, and order number filled in for every page, we'll check required for each one of the index fields. In the next section, we see the log folder. This allows you to save index and batch information to a variety of common outputs such as CSV, XML, and text. We're not going to use this for this specific example. The output tab allows you to set where and how you'd like to save the images. In this particular example, we want to save to the SIM 102 output folder. So we can set that here. And just like in the input, it sets the path automatically. You can also set what output file format you'd like, whether it be TIFF, JPEG, PDF, or PDFA, which is an archiving format. We want to pick PDF for this specific example. The existing files dropdown is how you designate how the indexes should be combined for multi-page image files. By default, append to end is selected. That automatically creates multi-page files with the index criteria creating the different sections. You can also append to start if you want the images to be set as the in the front of the file. You can also replace existing files when you're indexing documents that have the same index values as the output or numbered one page files creates single page single image files on the output and uses an auto number at the end of each file name to separate between the multiple files. The number is designated by the length of the page number length. So in this specific example if we were to pick numbered one page files then it would add a dash 0001 a four digit number. You can also set the metadata with the set file properties and also set PDF bookmarks if you like. In the next step, we will be saving the configuration. So we're going to hit finish and it asks where we'd like to save the configuration files. This specific configuration file we'll call SIM 102. And when we save it, it'll be saved as a .sic file. If we check back in the SIM 102, we see that it's uh, our simple index icon with the file as a simple index job configuration. If you have the file type turned on, these will be .sic format, which stands for simple index configuration. Now that we've set up the job, it's time to run the job on the images in the input folder. To run the job, you open up the configuration that you set up, which is open by default once you've finished setting up the job configuration, and you click Run Job. When you run job, it imports the images, processes the images, which in this particular configuration was skipped due to the fact that there was no automatic processing turned on. And then finally, it shows you the first page or the first image of what you've scanned or imported. So we're going to type in all the information manually. As you'll notice, the text shows up blue. Once we actually save the indexes for this particular image, these will show up black. To save the indexes, you either click the Save Index button or Enter. Now when we move on to the next page, we have fields to fill in the new index information for the new image. If we go to the grid view, we can see what we've indexed so far. If we expand this field, we can see that we type 
we type tech type interfaces in this along with the account number and order number. So in this particular page, we will type the new information. Just like on the last page, the information shows up blue until we save the index and then it shows up black. The same goes for filling in the lines of the grid. So as soon as I hit save index, it fills in the lines. When I go back, we see that the values are now black. So we can tell what file we're on down here at the bottom. We're on file three of three. That tells us where we are in the batch so we can keep an eye on how far we've gotten and how far we have left to go. Once we get to the last page and hit save index or enter, it'll ask us if we would like to release the batch. When we hit yes, it actually applies the indexes to the images and saves in the folder and file name structure that we designated in the job options. As you see now it exported and it will be output to the folder that we designated as the output path. So if we go into the SIM 102 folder, output, we see there's three folders, one for each of the company names. And if we want to expand that, we can see that the file names are the account number and order number. Same goes for each of the company names. That's the end of the Simple Software Training University video number 102, Job Configuration Basics. In this video, we've seen how to set up a very basic manual indexing configuration for Simple Index and run that configuration to completion.